right, so this is as good as the lighting gets. But what we're trying to do now that we've stitched our seam so it's nice and structural is we're going to add some more wax material to this corner region and build it up so it's got some body to it. Um, just because when you add a thin plate of wax to a band ring, uh, visually you just want there to be like a little elbow joint here. It's like a slightly thicker section of material. And so just laying that back and forth. I'm taking advantage of the glass transition rate so I can smooth that curve. And then you'll notice there's this string portion, right? And you're going to get a lot of these strings floating around, and that's okay. Um, you're going to come back and, and address those with your hot tool. But right now, we're just trying to build up that perimeter. And then we'll come back with the pokey tool itself. And, uh, back with the pokey tool itself and stitch those in tightly. So you'll notice that my alcohol lamp dripped directly on my ring. That's a bad setup, um, but I didn't respond to it. Right? You didn't see me try and do anything while it was hot, and that's because I'm hoping that the rate that the wax landed wasn't hot enough to bond to the profile of my ring. Um, and if not, we'll address that when we get there. But right now we're just trying to lay down some nice hot globs and build up the shape that we want to bond to the ring. And so it's really about just preventing it from falling over for that brief moment that it needs to cool. And as it's cooling, it's heating up the adjacent wax, the wax from the band ring and the wax from the top of the ring to the point where they can achieve good bonding, good solid fusion. And so in the end, um, it's always good to take your time and just make sure it's shaping up the way you want uh, because it's less work in the long run if you come back with a pokey tool and stitch the areas that aren't done well, but the rest of it has a good shape and a good bond. I'm just letting it flow, trying to get it to come down to this tip just a little bit for the aesthetic appeal. And then as it's cooling, I'm just gently stroking it right back into place. And remember that your, your spoony tool is hot. And so every time you do that, you introduce just a little bit of thermal mass. And so that's a good thing in the sense that you can keep working it. And then once you start to see those stringers form, you're basically out of working time. I'm just going to rub my spoonie tool along the interior of the band, and I'm pinning down the file with my finger. That, that may be off camera, but just know that the file, is its weight alone is not enough to hold your wax free. But I found when I'm doing this work, I don't necessarily need my hands in there um, to hold the wax. It's usually better to have a dumb piece of dead weight, and then when I know I'm going to apply some pressure, I just press down on the object that was fixturing it to the table or whatever. And we're going to blend this exterior side as well. A little more heat. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of the fluff on the way. We'll lay it down, try and get that bead to smooth out. So when you build these bridges and you've filed out this beautiful uniform band, you have to ask yourself, does that band stay in a parallel line or does it sweep over to this bridge that I've built to the other piece of wax? And that's an aesthetic choice. You've got to make that decision on your own. But it's a good question to ask yourself because that may tell you you want to build the wax slightly higher so you can match that contour or you don't and uh, it can be lower because you plan on carving it back in one fashion or another. Get that nice and smooth. And you can see right here there's this tiny little area, this little air pocket. And I'm going to have to come back with a hot tool and just address that. 
but I think I'll pull it off and show it on camera to really clarify what I'm looking at. Get the flame out. Now you can't see the flame most of the time, so it's always good to put it out when you're not using it. But uh, you can see right there. Thank you, camera. Cooperate with me. You can see right here, there's an air bubble. And that's not going to affect any of the structural integrity of the ring when it's metal. But if I'm doing any heavy carving, I'm going to want to get in there and get that little divot popped and full of material. So I'll do that at some point. But I don't think I'll cover that in a video. You all know how to take a hot tool and just poke it in there and wiggle it around. Okay, so uh, we have our little droplet. And let's just see if it comes off. So I'm holding, I'm supporting the ring, and I'm prying, and it doesn't want to let go. You can tell it's a different material, right? So I'm looking at the lighting to infer that it's not bonding. So it's, it's on there, but it's not strongly on there. So with just a little more pressure, we can get it to relieve. And you can see, this is the nice part, make sure the camera's focused. You can see the high gloss region where the wax didn't land and then you can see a matte finish and that tells you that the wax bonded ever so slightly to the surface and it took that material with when i popped off the bead but it's still less work to pop it off and flame polish it than it is to try and come back and file that bead down because um, filing a perfectly round surface is a bit of a nightmare so since we've got time left for this part of the video i will just Flame polish the edge of that band ring back to its final form. A little bit more. And you don't want to rush it, right? If you can't get it on the first try, you just wait and let it cool down. But I'm going to call that sufficient for what, what we're trying to accomplish here. Just enough. So that's what you need to know about um, building up your, your waxes and putting in your nice little support. And then we'll come back with a file and kind of dress this up all clean and figure out if we want to build up any more anywhere else.